All right, next up in the Dark Castle franchise or filmography or <clears throat> whatever you want to call it, 13 Ghosts with uh, Matthew Lillard and uh, Tony Shalhoub. Is that how you say his name? Oh, no, no. And then we got Shannon Elizabeth in this. Ooh, Shannon Elizabeth. This is back in, back in the glory days, back in the Nadia American Pie days. She is... She's a good-looking woman. All right. Man, these films are just so high-tech and edgy. They just take the concepts from these old films, and then they make them all modernized with their technology and their edgy music. And <laughs> I, love the, I love the dump truck filled with blood that they're spraying everywhere because ghosts are attracted to blood, I guess. I... <laughs> When they started spraying blood everywhere, I was like, okay, that's, is there a shark? Is it a, go, is it a ghost shark? Blood, just a tankard full of blood. Like the 30 victims that are just standing right there waiting to be slaughtered, that's not enough bait. They need to spray blood everywhere. That is just so dumb. <laughs> that is just so dumb to me. But uh, I guess it works. Uh, one of the guys that's killed in that junkyard scene gets pulled into a car and then he splits backwards. A lot of, a lot of backwards folding lawn chair kills in uh, this series of films from uh, Dark Castle. I keep wanting to say Dark Sky for some reason, but Dark Castle. I almost say Sky every single time. Um, you, now, I think what is a really, really cool element here and a throwback to the original 13 Ghosts is the inclusion of the glasses being worn by the characters within the film to be able to see the ghosts because in the original movie, you actually were given glasses to wear in the theater and with those glasses, you could see the ghosts in the film. And without them, I don't know if you could see them at all or if you could see that they glue a like glowed a different color or something you had to wear glasses when you went to see it to be able to see the ghost properly and so they make the characters in this movie wear the glasses which i thought was a really really cool touch now one thing that did annoy me with that gimmick though was that within the film and i don't know if this was us seeing it that way or it was them seeing it that way but the glasses allow you to see the ghosts, right? So when you have the glasses on, there they are. So why is it that every single time we saw a fucking ghost in this movie when the characters was wearing the glasses, did they keep cutting in and out? Was that our vision? And that was the, you know, the style of the filmmaking? Or were they seeing them flash in and out? So they would be there and then they'd cut out and then they'd be there and then they'd cut out and it was like they did it um 80 100 times in the movie i mean they overused that they're there they're not there they're there they're not there flash in flash out thing way 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 too much the whole gimmick is when you put the glasses on you can see them so why is it that they're not there and then when they put them on they could you know flash in but why do they keep flashing in and out oh it was driving me nuts it was giving me like a fucking epileptic seizure man it was just so flashy it was driving me absolutely crazy anyway another thing i really liked about this movie was actually the opening credits which i'm not a fan of opening credits but the way this the opening credits play out so there's this like spinning camera it starts on a family in a house, and then it just starts slowly rotating, and you hear audio, you know, voiceover, talking about, you know, or well, I shouldn't say talking about, but um, we can hear the audio and the voices of the family as their mom is trapped in the house and burns to death, and kind of the aftermath of that in the hospital, and the camera just keeps rotating as we get the credits up on the walls and whatnot. I just thought it was a really cool touch of kind of, how to tell the story of the family and what happened to them. I'm not usually a fan of this, but 
I don't know, it really worked here well for me. I thought the voiceover was good. I thought the use of the camera was, was interesting. So pretty memorable. I liked it a lot. And then you've got your kid in this who's obsessed with death. His mom dies when he's a young kid. So this is how he copes with that. He, you know, kind of makes death interesting and fun to him so that he can deal with his mom's death, which totally makes sense. I mean, everybody grieves and processes things differently. So, you know, this is his way. And I like that. And the house that they go to, the house that, you know, it's the, the infernal machine that they go and is created by the devil and powered by ghosts. The, the set design in this movie is fucking top notch. This is one of the coolest sets in film. Like one of the, especially in horror. It's so high tech. It's so good looking. Like, you know, this house had to be built for this movie. There's no fucking house looks like that. It's uh, a fantastic set. I mean, just the set design, the execution of it, the little spinning plates in the middle of the room, the doors all come and close, the glass with all the incantations on it, the cells, all of that stuff. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Really, really cool set. Now, someone will tell me that this is actually some house that they took. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever it is. And then he like puts the key in and it spins and the doors open up and they're all the way that the house is designed and the angles within it and all that. And filming. Could you imagine filming in a completely glass structure where you like have to worry about reflections and lights shining off the glass and everything? This movie must have been a pain in the fucking ass to light and to shoot and to run around in. And wow. I mean, uh, behind the scenes of this movie probably were just you know, um, grueling, to be honest. But regardless, the end result is fun because this film is extremely over the top and super silly, but it's just, I think what, I think what is the best thing about this movie for me is the creature design. I mean, or the monster design, if you will, whatever you want to call it. Always love uh, seeing Matthew Lillard in a movie, of course. Uh, I got to meet him at Mad Monster Party. My buddy Tony Crespo uh, went up to him and pitched him a Scooby-Doo and Shaggy at the after the apocalypse film. It was like, what did he compare it to? Like, oh, it was, uh, I can't remember, even some Mad Max or something. And Tony was joking. But he went up to Matthew Lillard and he pitched him this idea. He thought it was going to be funny. And Matthew Lillard, he was kind of drunk, but he just pretty much sat there and told Tony what an idiot he was. Not like mean, but he was like doing it in his eyes. I could tell because he kept kind of reiterating, like, I'm not trying to be a dick. Like, I'm trying to tell you you're better than this. And that's one of the stupidest fucking ideas I've ever heard. And this and that. And Tony was like sitting there like, okay, like I was just kidding. Like, you know, whatever. Um, but Matthew Lillard just could not stop saying like, dude, you're, f- you know, your fucking idea is terrible. And he like, he made me look at him and be like, tell your friend that his idea is fucking terrible and that he has no shot in the business unless he like goes back to the drawing board and, and, you know, comes up with it. It was funny. We just could not get him to stop talking about it. He was just like, yeah, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. I even have a picture of Tony and him, and he's given a big thumbs down to Tony in the picture because of his script idea. That was I'm I'm glad that we did that though. That was that was one of my favorite memories of that entire thing. Um, but anyways, and he's pretty tall. I mean, I think he's about as tall as I am, or maybe a little taller. Yeah, I'm six three, so I think he's like six four or something. Because he was he was really tall. He was he was he was like me. He was, and Tony looked like in the picture he looks. You know, Tony's got to be, what, 5'9", five, 5'7", five, something like that. Anyway, um, and then he has, I can't remember what they call this, where if someone touches you, you have the you have the ability to see, like, into their soul, into their past, into their, um, you know, into their presence. What do they call that? It's like an, an empath or, no, that's just somebody who feels other people, not their 
emotion or not that's if they can feel their emotions it's some kind of bullshit anyways um tele something i'm sure telekinetic telekinesis tele fucking teletubbies um and let's see okay so the lawyer that brings them in is halved straight down uh the center by a, a glass door and then the front half of him slides down and then the back half of him slides down as a really cool shot um, the creature design, as we had said, monster design, we said, I said, uh, you got, you got so many cool creatures in this. I don't feel like we see them like each one of them enough. We see some of them a lot and we do see ghosts a lot. Don't get me wrong, but there's ghosts. I definitely would have liked to see just a little bit more, you know, like the mother and her son and um, the torso, I guess the torso can't do a whole hell of a lot more. Um, and the juggernaut, I feel like we didn't see him a ton. Uh, but we definitely saw the naked chick a lot, um, and which is fine. <laughs> I like how she has a slice across her nipple. But yeah, totally nude ghost the entire time. Great stuff. Um, probably my favorite of the ghosts, the favorite like creature design or monster design of these ghosts. Um, the naked chick is definitely the most memorable one for me, but having gone back and rewatched it, um, I think the torso is really fucking like disturbing looking just a tor like a, just a torso with like different length limbs chopped off at, at different parts, just kind of crawling around and the way it's bandaged and everything. It, that's a really, really freaky looking thing. I mean, could you imagine if you went like you walked into a room and there was a torso with no head no arms no legs like crawling towards you and it was like wrapped up in a is it plastic or is it in you know like cloth something it's like wrapped up and it's bloody and all that like you would lose your fucking mind like everything else you could at least like maybe convince yourself it was a costume or something because they have heads and limbs and but this thing has no head it has no it, it is so freaky looking now Granted, what could a torso really do to you? It can't grab onto you. I mean, it's not really, a, you know, a formidable foe. But regardless, it would freak me the fuck out. So accompanied with that torso would be something like, um, I like the the chick with the with the the thing over her head. The look of her, she actually kind of reminded me of uh, the main villain in. Uh, John Carpenter's Ghost of Mars. As silly as that film is, he, she had a very similar face to that. I don't know. They're all pretty cool. I mean, I don't dislike any of the creature designs in the movie. I think they're all they're all pretty rad. Um, and oh, this has feature length audio commentary on it. Hmm. I wonder with who. Doesn't say. All right. And um, <laughs> Lillard's character in this movie is so money hungry. It's making me laugh because he just keeps wanting to get out of things. But he ends up getting, the way he dies and they break him, yet again, another broken and half body. But like they hit him on a corner of a wall and it snaps him. <sighs> Could you imagine getting broken like that? You wouldn't die instantly either. You would lay there in agony. Um, or maybe it would uh, paralyze you and you wouldn't feel any of it. I don't know. Regardless, you would not be happy. Let's let's all agree on that. Um, not sure why they drag Shannon Elizabeth's character around when she falls on the ground, and they drag her around the entire house. It's like, just let her get up and run. Like you all move much faster. I just thought it was funny. Like maybe for the first like couple seconds, but the whole time, just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. I mean, I guess she didn't have enough time to get up. I don't know. And um, so, of course, the chick who comes in, the, the, the girl that is from Army of Darkness, Sheila. Um, first you want to kiss, kill me, now you want to kiss me. Blow. Um, she convinces the dad here that he needs to sacrifice himself um, to stop the thing. But, of course, it's a big lie and that his, uh, his uncle Cyrus... Um, it was the warriors that shot Cyrus. He uh, pretends that he's dead in the house, that he's a ghost. He's actually real. And we get another double cross here, kind of like the Famke Jensen 
double cross where they faked the death and they the girl that's there to help them makes out with the bad guy and then you know whatever so very similar thing going on here um, and <laughs> I put bitch is in on it um, and let's see so I like that the I like that Cyrus is thrown into the machine and it just like obliterates his body and throws him into a thousand different directions that was pretty cool um, and then the dad like does the leap of faith and jumps in there. And I guess because those things are turning, they're blocking the debris of the house as the place collapses because like he didn't, I mean, outside of that, outside of that explanation, did he didn't really need to go in there. It wasn't like his leap of faith, like protected his family. It's not like the sh machine shut down because of that, you know, it, I don't know. But regardless, and then the mom's there, and it's kind of cute. This film feels very quick. I was very surprised when I went back and I was like, oh, we're here already? Oh, we're at the end? Oh, shit, it's over? Okay. Like, I feel like it was on for, like, an hour at best. Like, 50 minutes to an hour. So, if it was a... I don't know. It felt like there could have been a lot more to it. A lot more kill. I wish they would have had more people come in the house. I wish it would have been, like, the family and then you know, a couple other family members that they didn't know of and they, like, were coming to try to get the money with them or whatever. Just more people to, to for these ghosts to kill because only, only a couple people die. I mean, Cyrus gets his and then uh, the chick, which I don't even remember how she dies now off the top of my head. Um, how the hell does she die? Does she die? Yeah, she does, right? I don't remember how she dies. I can't remember. So Matthew Lillard, the lawyer, and then Cyrus, and then that girl who I don't even remember her death. And then we get some kills in the very opening of the junkyard. But I just feel like 13 ghosts should have had at least 13 kills, you know? Um, the Every ghost should have been able to get a kill. Every ghost in the film should have been able to get a kill. Maybe outside of the torso, because as I said, what the fuck could he possibly do? But regardless... Every fucking ghost in this should have gotten their own kill so they could get their, like, Mortal Kombat finishing move and we get to see what they do, like, what, what comes out of their death. Or get out of the tag team by the mom and the son uh, ripping someone apart or something. Just, they could have more fun with the ghosts, and they didn't. But the creature design's fantastic. The set design is fantastic. Matthew Lillard's performance is over-the-top and fun. And Shannon Elizabeth is always wonderful to look at. And Tony Shalob, Shalub, Shalub from Monk and, of course, 1408. Um, I've never watched Monk, but I know Tony from plenty of other things. But whenever I think of him, I always think of him as, you know, the um, book, his agent, I guess, and the owner of the book, and whatever the hell he is in 1408. Uh, Michael, Michael Enslin's agent, maybe. Um, talk quick. This guy's 400 bucks an hour. Uh, anyway, all right, let's move on.